Welcome back to another Bay 12 Motors test run. We've got four new models today, and we're starting with our very first proper off-road vehicle. Just look how far the uh, drive shaft is bending to give us that ride height. This is the Migrant. It's yet another car using our ubiquitous water wheel engine, the goofy, tiny turbocharged engine, which every demographic and automation likes fuel economy finds to be basically the optimal solution. One size fits all. Now, uh, of all the cars we're driving out on the test track, you can see in the distance here, I have times for all of them, I have times for this one too. We already know that the migrant's going to be slow. It's got no power. But uh, I'm going to see what it can do in the gravel course. I think that'll be a little better use of its abilities. The other three miles we've got coming up, they'll go on the uh, pavement like normal. Let's see, it really rolls. I think this is the most roll we had since the original Baron. And oh, it bounces too. All wheel drive gives us uh, some control, even when there's no grip. And it's not even a little bothered by the elevation changes. Yeah, that's fine. You just hit the brakes and it likes to uh, pitch around a little bit. In fact, I bet uh, some of our other vehicles would be plenty of fun to drive on the gravel, too. But uh, I'm lazy. I like to do only one lap and call it a day with no practice. I'll say this one is not completely fair. I got just a little practice because I started recording this video and then I got a phone call. So I did that first corner a little better than I did my uh, first completely blind run around. Up the hill we can kind of feel the lack of power. There's just no torque in this little turbocharged engine. There's no power, even the peak's not much. And bouncing around. Got 119. If I had to make that multiple laps, it would have been awful because I completely lost control over the end there. Our next car will be the Hauler Mark II. And that'll be on the regular racetrack circuit. So this is the minivan body. It's constructed like a minivan. It's got front-wheel drive. It's got double wishbone. It's all monocoque chassis. But it's it's full size. It's huge. This is, is big enough to be a proper commercial van, even though it's not really built like one. Uh, it turns out what they like is more space inside, so you drag the back out, drag the front out, and you get this enormous vehicle. The time, I think, was something around 3.20. I'm sure I'll fall short as usual. Should be getting a little better at driving these cars, though. Off the line, we have... Not much. It's just not very fast. I can't say I'm surprised to learn that. That's true of most B12 motor cars. And, uh... Being large and heavy, this is an exemplary example of our... Patented acceleration. In fact, that, uh, that might be about to change our, our reputation for slow cars when we get to the end here. Uh, if you've read the post, you already know we have some great sports cars to try out. Oh wow, it's uh, a little willing to put the back out during hard braking. I guess, uh, like the original Baron, Actually, well, that's just separate from bad brakes in general. But uh, as a family utility vehicle, they like it when you tune the car as if there's going to be more weight in the back, because most of the time, using this car on the road, there'll be cargo passengers. So when it's empty, like we're testing it now, it's uh, a little stiff braking in the back. Coming uh, downhill, the weight can finally play to our advantage see what we get for a top speed. I'm hoping for 90. If I can just make that, I'll be happy. Oh, 88? Eh, ah, nope. That, that's about it. At this speed, we're, uh, we're not even using the limits of the grip on the slingshot. I'll try and see how fast I can take the variant bend, though. More 
with that rear coming out for the braking. And we're pretty comfortable taking that at 50 with the throttle on, it looks like. This may be a family car, but it's not quite, I guess it's a lot of wobble, it's not quite as stiff in the uh, roll angle given in the designer because uh, it's so big they care about the drivability a lot too. So you had to compromise a little bit between being more comfortable and easier to handle compared to a smaller car where they don't mind as much. You can see uh, on our boost gauge there, we've upped the boost from 4.6 PSI to a whopping 5. That's just the kind of high performance you can expect from a 1980s turbocharged engine aimed at the economy segment. Which is uh, a complete aberration, really. It's bizarre, but in automation, they just love turbos. In fact, it's almost unfair. I'm told that the AI competitor cars never use turbos. That could go some way to explaining, not all the way, but some way to explaining why our competitiveness in the campaign is just ridiculously high, almost no matter what we do at this point. I'm through there in 325. That's uh, a lot closer to the test track time than I usually come. I'm getting a little better at driving these cars. I don't take uh, practice laps, but they kind of all handle the same, these front wheel drive cars. Now I'm ready to make a fool of myself because we have a sports car coming up. This will be the Rapture. We uh, tried a few candidates and settled on this nice soft top convertible version. Of our two sports cars, they both share exactly the same engine. That's not our big powerful new noble engine, but a refresh of the old engine in the Baron. That's a 3.5 liter V8 that fits a lot better. However, it's turbocharged for maximum power. I think uh, 2.25 was the time, and I've just never come close to that in, I think, any car in the animation test track. So this is all-wheel drive. Both of our sports cars are. Once we unlock all-wheel drive, we're probably going to use it a lot. They like it. It's easy. And the handling is not quite all the way to balance. It's in between the understeer and oversteer lines. Whereas, oh, ABS, by the way. See that light flashing? I can't make the wheels lock up. It just stops the car nicely for me. Now even I can break without losing control. Mostly. So yeah, needless to say, this is a lot faster. Uh, this is the first of our engines at all, where we've got to really open up the exhaust, lift up the cams, and uh, just make the most power for the displacement we can. We're also pushing double the pressure, the boost, through this thing compared to our economy engine. We're up at 130. Oh no, oh no. And... That, nah, I'm fine. Uh, that's, that's a good line, that's a good lap. What do you mean that looked dangerous? So this car... They can, could use the ABS again. And that, that tire squealing is because I was pushing the stick all the way. I think I actually could have uh, done a better corner if I was gentle with it. Let's test out that ABS again. This car has a little more weight on the front. It's front-engined. The all-wheel drive makes it nice and easy to handle. And it gives it the ability to accelerate through the corners. But that's in contrast to other cars, which is also all-wheel drive, also the same engine, but it's going to have more weight on the rear, and that's going to affect the handling characteristics for, uh, in theory, for the better. It should also maybe accelerate better. I think, I think actually maybe both of these cars have a little bit of front-wheel drive bias in the all-wheel drive system, because you can tune it whichever way. 
actually, that might be a little unfair. I think there's still a bug where all-wheel drive cars and beam, if they have uh, one way or the other stronger preferences, they make more power out of the transmission than goes in from the engine due to complete nonsense calculations. Uh, so that came at 236. I believe 225 was the time. Uh, I'll, I'll take that for the first run. That's not bad at all. I probably could uh, make that better by not almost crashing on the slingshot. And that'll be my goal for the LMP82 here. If I don't crash it, or if I don't uh, lose control on the slingshot, I'll consider myself good. So this, uh, it looks like a completely different car from the Rapture, but underneath it's a lot of the same parts. It's the same exact Baron engine with no tweaks. It's the same all-wheel drive. It's got ABS, one of the new features, which will hopefully be making its way to our regular cars. And, but it also has a completely different body. It has partial aluminum construction, still monocoque. It's not, uh, many supercars, you'd build them in a small factory. That means they have to have a space frame chassis, but it's have a normal chassis. So, let's see what it can do, and uh, we'll hope that these teeny tiny tires don't pop, because uh, if you even put a heavier engine into the car, those will blow. I learned that in the designer. We are, if I'm not mistaken, just a little slower off the line. You can hear the turbo noise more because the engine's in the back, and oh yes, with the weight difference and the wider tires too, it feels a little more willing to turn, not as stiff. I can definitely see this being the sportier of the two cars, despite having the same power. I think in the future this could be a great candidate for uh, a version which has a bigger engine in it. Oh, oh, oh. Even with the ABS, that's just a little unstable. That was the best brake tuning I could come up with for what the automation demographics liked, but uh, I think it can clearly be better for driving a beam. Gotta give it a little more front bias, otherwise the back wants to kick out. So once again, we're gonna go really fast here, and I think I have to just lift off the throttle a little bit. We'll see, see what it can take. It actually hit its top speed. That feels unstable. I think it needs a uh, wing on it real bad. The Rapture, I gave it a wing. This one, I did not give it any aero features, which is really an oversight. And in here, it's, uh, well, it's not as bad. However, that corner was really awful in the automation test track within automation itself. It took that like 70 the whole way. So I, I know I lost time there. Can I break this late? Yes, I can. That's a lot of braking. And then, you know, I'm just so thrilled with my braking, I forget to drive otherwise. But, uh, I think I might be in line to beat the time for the Rapture. So at least I can say I'm... Oh, no. Oh, no. There's the braking again. I've got to go, uh, not all the way down. Really, the whole point of putting ABS in the car is so I can push the brake pedal all the way down without getting scared of crashing. And uh, I'd say I botched that. Ooh, little, little crunchy noises. It's so low to the ground, it doesn't like that hill there. Oh no, I've spun it. What am I at? 225 now? I was still coming in a little slow. So this one, it's sportier, but it's a little trickier to drive to because of the rear weight bias. So that comes at 235. I think we can tell it's a little faster car, but it's a little tricky too. Oh, I actually did beat my time with the Rapture. I thought I, uh, I was thinking of 225, the test track time, but I actually got 236 of it. So even with a big mistake, it came in faster. All right, that's our four new cars. I'll see you next time for some... Uh, Maybe we'll have a new model. We always have a few updates. Whatever we decide to do, I'll make a video.